service, whether you're here in person, whether you're joining us virtually, whether this is your first time with us, or if you've been with us before, we welcome you in this time of worship. Our focus this morning is going to be around the surprise of Easter. Uh, as the women visited the tomb, they were surprised at what they found. They didn't expect to see what they found. In fact, what they saw was the beginning of a totally different story than what they expected. Today we'll reflect a little bit on what that means for us in terms of the certainties we hold and how to be open to the newness which God brings into our world uh, in various ways in our own stories. Let's join together in prayer. Creating God, redeeming God, sustaining God. You are always on the cusp of creating new heavens and new earths. And on this Easter morning, we pray that you, we hold lightly those things that we think are certain so that we may more fully embrace the yet unknown surprises you are creating in the world, in our communities and in our families, in our church, and yes, even within ourselves. You are risen, you are risen indeed, amen.
Thank you. There's something about the trumpet on Easter which uh, is very uh, touching for me. So thank you very much. Uh, around the world, a common greeting on Easter morning is to greet each other with the phrase, Christ has risen, and then to respond with Christ has risen indeed. I'm going to invite you to stand and greet those around you. Uh, and also, if you don't know each other, make sure you know, exchange names and get to know each other a little bit. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Okay, please remain standing for please remain standing for our call to worship. Well, those of me, those of you on the left side will be group one, and those on the right side will be group two. And the call to worship is on the overhead here. So together we seek the way of God. The generous, way of God. On this day that God has made, may our hearts be open to the good news. Christ is not here, for he has risen. Jesus Christ has risen indeed. Remain standing for the hymn three, four, six in the voices together. Christ the Lord has risen today. Three, four, six.
And please remain standing for our next hymn, number 355, Thine is the Glory. Hello, there we go. Okay, there we go. Good morning, good morning. Hi, can you go have a seat? Thank you, Just sit right there. Okay. okay, so my name is Allison. At our house, we compost. Do any of you guys compost at your house? Yeah, right, good, sounds like a lot of people do. Um, so what is composting? It's like we put all of our like food scraps into a bin and then we like mix it with like dry things like leaves and lawn clippings and things like that. And hopefully eventually it'll break down and we'll have some nice fertilizer to put on our garden. Uh, 
So I did not bring our actual, so we have a counter compost bin, and then when that's full, we like take it out to our yard and to our bigger compost bin. I did not bring our counter compost bin because it's embarrassingly disgusting. Um, but I did bring some of a compost that we actually made this, was it last some this evening, uh, yesterday evening and last night here. Mm, don't look yummy, guys. I have some eggshells. You bet you guys can smell it already. Um, this is a moldy croissant. Um, some avocado shell, like a peel, some avocado toast. Um, there's a mango pit in there, some coffee grounds. Um, there's a mango peel, there was some sweet, a lot of fruit in our house, some strawberry tops. Oh, there's a cashew from snack last night that somebody didn't eat. Um, yeah, that's you, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so this is all the stuff that we'll take out to our compost when we get home. What are some fruits and like our vegetables that have like really big seeds that you like scoop out and you have to like put in the compost? Ian? Pumpkins? Mangoes? There's a fruit, avocados? Claire? Watermelon, Lily? Peach? Yeah, so sometimes, so what, this compost makes like it has this like makes a nice warm environment and then when it rains it creates a nice environment for seeds to germinate or sprout right sometimes we have surprise things that grow in our compost last year we had this like big like, last couple years we had this like big viney thing that grows i'm not great at identifying plants and so but eventually we figured out that it was i have it here it was ornamental pumpkins that were growing in our compost. It wasn't this exact one. I don't think, I think we might've got these from a pumpkin patch, but we probably had gotten them the year before the pumpkin patch and tossed them in there and then they started to sprout. One year, I think we got a cantaloupe. My dad has grown a squash in, out of the compost. And it was kind of, so we had these like surprise plants that we didn't even plant that are growing in our compost. Um, and I think it's just really cool that like some amazing cool things can grow out of literal stinky garbage, right? Isn't that pretty cool? And so Pastor Ben today is going to talk about so Pastor Ben today is going to talk about the surprise, another surprise of the women at the tomb finding the tomb empty, which will then lead, later lead to the surprise of Jesus' resurrection. Okay. And for my ending today, guys, this is kind of off topic, but I just, I like, I like this story a lot. There's a, are you guys, do you guys know the author C.S. Lewis? He wrote like, he wrote, he wrote books that you might have read, or will read eventually like The Lion and the Witch in the Wardrobe, The Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, 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 right. He also wrote a lot of books on Christian thought and Christianity. And one of the stories that he says is about this little boy at church that he, they called him, he called him a devout boy. And he made up a poem on Easter and he would say, chocolate eggs and Jesus is risen. And what C.S. Lewis points out is that we can have a childlike faith and still have our festive things and our spirituality. So what I brought for you guys today, and I want everybody to say it with me is, can we say it together? Chocolate eggs and Jesus is risen. Chocolate eggs and Jesus is risen. So, yes, thank you guys. So, Auden is ready for a chocolate egg. Can you take one? So, everyone come up and get them, and then you can go back to your seat. And while the kids are getting their chocolate eggs, the choir can come up here, start heading, making their way up here. Some of the yellow ones have peanut butter in them, guys. So, yep. Maybe later. Take one for now. Here, Ludo. We'll invite the ushers to come forward and receive our tithes and gifts at this time.
Juan 20, versículos 1 a 18. El primer día de la semana, María Magdalena fue al sepulcro muy temprano, cuando todavía estaba oscuro, y vio quitada la piedra que tapaba la entrada. Entonces se fue corriendo a donde estaban Simón Pedro y el otro discípulo, aquel a quien Jesús quería mucho, y les dijo, se han llevado del sepulcro al Señor y no sabemos dónde lo han puesto. Pedro y el otro discípulo salieron y fueron al sepulcro. Los dos iban corriendo juntos, pero el otro corrió más que Pedro y llegó primero al sepulcro. Se agachó a mirar y vio allí las vendas, pero no entró. Detrás de él llegó Simón Pedro y entró en el sepulcro. Él también vio allí las vendas y además vio que la tela que había servido para envolver la cabeza de Jesús no estaba junto a las vendas, sino enrollada y puesta aparte. Entonces entró también el otro discípulo, el que había llegado primero al sepulcro, y vio que lo que había pasado y creyó, pues todavía no habían entendido lo que dice la Escritura, que él tenía que resucitar. Luego aquellos discípulos regresaron a su casa. María se quedó afuera junto al sepulcro llorando. Y llorando como estaba, se agachó para mirar dentro. Y vio dos ángeles vestidos de blanco, sentados donde había estado el cuerpo de Jesús, uno a la cabecera y otro a los pies. Los ángeles le preguntaron, Mujer, ¿por qué lloras? Ella les dijo, ¿Por qué se han llevado a mi Señor y no sé dónde lo han puesto? Apenas dijo esto, volvió la cara, volvió la cara y vio allí a Jesús, pero no sabía que era Él. Jesús le preguntó, Mujer, ¿por qué lloras? ¿A quién buscas? Ella, pensando que era Él que cuidaba el huerto, le dijo, Señor, si usted se lo ha llevado, dígame dónde lo ha puesto para que yo vaya a buscarlo. Jesús entonces le dijo, María. Ella se volvió y le dijo en hebreo, Rabuni, que quiere decir maestro. Jesús le dijo, no me retengas porque todavía no he ido a reunirme con mi Padre. Pero ve y di a mis hermanos que voy a re reunirme con él, que es mi Padre y Padre de ustedes, mi Dios y Dios de ustedes. Entonces María Magdalena fue y contó a los discípulos que había visto al Señor y también les contó lo que él le había dicho.
The Easter morning story is recorded by John in John 21 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one that Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they, put, where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked in at the stri strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb, and he saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' Jesus's head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. And then finally the other disciples, who had reached the tomb first, went, also went inside, and he saw, believe, saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in her Aramaic, Robone, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and your Father and to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, they'd been, that he had said these things to her. Good morning. good morning. It is good to see you all here this morning. Christ is risen. Christ is risen I invite you to pray with me as we reflect on this story. God of Shalom, empower us with your spirit to follow Jesus, to love one another, and to proclaim your peace. Give us ears to hear your word today. Amen. 
this is a masterful story. Uh, just as far as a piece of writing goes, the, the John chapter 20 is, is incredible. Every detail, every word, every thing said, every action taken is worth reflection, pondering. I feel sorry that I cannot preach all the sermons at once. So we just enter in to this, this story that is, that is the deepest of all stories and, and see what we can see. And this morning, one of the things that I'm wondering is, what is more certain than a closed tomb? What can you imagine that seems more final? I have this image in my mind, if we were to put, uh, if we were to make this story into a movie, there would be a shot from within the tomb as the stone is rolled in front of it. The light dims, gets slimmer and slimmer, and the light disappears entirely, cut to black, a long black screen. And then what? The theme of this Easter worship is from certainty to openness. And that sparked my imagination. It's a fascinating phrase because, because what is open in this story? What is opened is a closed tomb. What is certain is death. And what is open is a tomb. I, it makes me wonder about the events of the previous week narrated in the Gospels. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, his confrontations with the authorities, his betrayal and his arrest, his trial and torture and execution. It makes me wonder about how horrible it all was and how horrible things like this happen again and again throughout human history, throughout our world. How this man's death 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem is held up as a symbol, as a representation of all the horrors that humanity visits upon one another and upon God in our existence. So many people have tried to claim that the events of Good Friday were a good thing. It's called Good Friday after all, but the whole point is that it was horrible. It was the worst thing. And Jesus calls us not to forget that. And part of the re reason it's so horrible is because death is so final, so certain. We are all dying, each one of us. And the finality of death, or what feels like the finality of death, is one of those things that we have a hard time thinking about directly in our daily lives. And in this story, we, we put bodies in tombs. We seal off tombs. We leave them in their place in the darkness and we continue our lives. And I wonder, what would happen if that certainty burst open? What happens when the tomb opens? What if death is not certain or final? What then? What happens when in the darkness of a tomb, a new light shines. I was reminded this week that the author of this gospel tells us what's coming from the very beginning, from the opening sentences of the book, saying, what has come into being through the world was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Overcome it. 
out of darkness comes creation. It's the same story as the first chapter of Genesis. Within the darkness of the tomb, life emerges. Light streams forth. The darkness cannot overcome it. In that movie about the tomb, after the stone rolls in front of the camera and shuts out all light, when the stone is rolled away, it's not about the light of the sun streaming into the tomb. It's about the light that has emerged within the tomb streaming out into the world. There is new light, new life, born within the darkness of that tomb, coming to enlighten the world. That's what John says in chapter 1, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. I ponder and ponder and ponder this light and dark metaphor. It is so rich. It is so deep. The way that John talks about light and darkness throughout his entire gospel are worth pondering your entire life. I encourage you to do it. And I want to be up front because in our congregation we have an ongoing effort to work against racism. This metaphor has often been twisted. Twisted to a point where white is a stand-in for good and black is a stand-in for bad. Black magic, black markets. It even happens in the Bible, like when the psalmist says, wash me and I will be whiter than snow. When we begin to extend that metaphor, even subconsciously, to people, we're in dangerous territory associating whiteness with goodness or blackness with badness. We have to be very careful with our language, with the metaphors that we use because they matter. Although it is worth mentioning that whoever wrote that psalm did not have white skin. So it's obviously not what they were talking about. But there's something different about light and dark, this key metaphor that we're working with here. Instead of white and black, it's light and dark. White and black are colors, properties of objects, reflecting light streaming towards them. Light itself is different. Light and darkness says something about the presence of a source, something that makes things visible in the first place, whatever color they are. Darkness is the absence of light. There is no source. It makes vision difficult. Light is the first creation of God, the original source, and it's recognized as essential to life. And here, in this resurrection story, in John chapter 20, everything gets turned on its head. John says, yes, there is that previous creation. And then, now, suddenly, there is new creation. Here, in this moment, the two meet. In the old creation, Jesus is arrested and tried and condemned to death under the cover of darkness. The people doing these deeds hope to hide within the darkness. When Jesus dies, they hide his body from the light of the old creation, shutting it in a tomb. And then, on the first day of the week, comes the dawn, not just of a new day, but of an entirely new creation. This new creation life and new creation light comes from inside the tomb. That's where it begins. Not the world of the sun and the living people that we're used to. This is something utterly new, utterly unique. The light of the new creation shines out from the tomb into a world that has never seen such a thing before. Even though our sun is still shining, it is this new light that allows us to see, to perceive the world around us. And the darkness 
everything we're used to that previously did not let us see will not overcome the new light and the new life. The present world fears darkness, tries to confine people and death and deeds to darkness, tries to be certain of it. The new creation, though, is birthed within darkness and shines within it. We must ponder this story our whole lives. We are living in a new creation if we but have eyes to see it. All the powers of this world for fear, death, and darkness, yet death is only certain in this present creation. In the new creation, life emerges again and again and again. We have this hope for the future and the abundant eternal life for the present through this great creation of God. This Easter, I invite you to celebrate this new creation. I will close with a poem, my favorite Easter poem by Wendell Berry, written in early days of the US invasion of Iraq in 2003. It was relevant for that time, and it is for our time, too, with war and suffering and hope all around us. It goes like this. The politics of illusion, of death's money, possesses us. This is the hell, this is the nightmare into which Christ descended from the cross, from which also he woke and rose striding godly forth, so free that he appeared to Mary Magdalene to be only the gardener, walking about in the new day among the flowers. Amen. Let's stand and sing together in Voices Together, number 340, Lift Your Glad Voices.
It is the time of our service to uh, offer announcements and prayer requests and introduce visitors. Uh, to begin, though, uh, I would like to take a moment um, to offer a congregational blessing to those people who were recently installed into congregational leadership roles uh, on the board and the trustees and our newly formed congregational care circle. Um, if that is one of you, uh, please start coming up to the front here. I know several people are, uh, are out of town this morning. Um, so the board members are Maureen Entz and David Kaufman. The new, or the new trustee member is Jeremy Kindy. And the congregational care circle is made up of Paul Unruh, Joyce Bedsworth, Miguel Alatore, Chris Tyson, and Mary Dirksen. So there are, there are three of us present here, a lot of travelers, um, but these people, j just stand right here in front of the communion table, thank you. These people uh, will receive your congregational blessing um, for uh, all, all the work that uh, they are embarking on. I'm going to come down to the floor and we'll do a reading that will appear on your screen. Let us offer a blessing to these people who are uh, beginning terms as uh, in congregational leadership and for all those who are already serving. Let's read together. Empowering God with your people through the ages, we call members of the church to develop gifts and skills for your service. Thank you for raising up these leaders among us. Fill them with the love of Christ and the church. Empower them with your Holy Spirit. Bless them with joy in the work of ministry. For the gifts that the Spirit nurtures within us and the ministries to which we are each called, thanks be to God. Amen. And we will continue the blessing uh, with uh, the next um, reading, which I believe is on your screen too. May God, who calls you to this ministry, grant you grace, joy, and endurance. May Christ guide and empower your service and leadership. Amen. May the Holy Spirit fill you with the gifts you need. Amen. May the one whose love unites us as the body of Christ strengthen us to live and proclaim the gospel together. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Maureen, Joyce, and Paul, and all of those who are in leadership here at Shalom. Now you may have noticed that we passed around the offering baskets today. That was a change in practice that we're uh, trying out. We used to do it several years ago and we're uh, doing it again. Another thing that we used to do is have uh, the microphone travel around the congregation for prayers and uh, uh, prayer requests, announcements, and any visitors you'd like to in, uh, introduce to the congregation. So Ron will walk around and uh, just flag him down if you have something to share. We need to get used to this again, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm Doreen Esau, and my mother Zola Esau is here. My daughter Eilish and Gabe are being shy, but they're also here. <laughs> okay, thank you. My name 
is John McKay Bianchi, and uh, it's a great joy at Easter to have family joining us from afar. This is my sister Diane Van Gunten and her husband Stan. They're here from Bern, Indiana today, and are members of the Bern Mennonite Church. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Tim Huber, and Heidi would like me to introduce her aunt and uncle, Arlen and Moretta. Welcome. I just found that out when I reached for the mic. Um, I'm also, I, I'm not just here with my wife, I'm also here with the Congregational Board, and we are currently looking forward to the Western District Conference Assembly at the end of July, and we're looking for delegates. It will be at a camp with lots of activities near Dallas. So if you're interested in Dallas or activities, it's for you. And uh, I also read in a news announcement this week that one of the things that they will be doing at this year's annual assembly is welcoming a congregation uh, in Guatemala into membership. And so that's kind of an exciting development as well. So. Uh, it should be a lovely weekend, and if you're interested in being a delegate, contact the office or Pastor Ben or the Congregational Board. Uh, there's an email address, board at shalomnewton.org, and if you want to know how to spell that, there's an announcement in the bulletin. <laughs> I'm Abby Cook. Um, Evan and I are lucky to have both of our families here today, and they're conveniently located right next to each other. So um, in the front row is my grandma, Frances, and my parents, Paul and Wendy, and my sister, Rebecca, and her boyfriend, Hayden. And then behind them is Evan's dad, Robert, his mom, Linda, and sister, Mandy. So we're glad to have them here today. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you for all of those. Yeah, I, uh, it, it is good to see a full congregation and the announcements keep coming. Uh, Ron, we really are not used to this. Um, and um, we're hardly used to seeing each other during worship like this. So if you see somebody you haven't seen for a while, please speak to them, say hi, and ask them how they're doing. If you see somebody brand new, introduce yourself. And if they are longtime members and you are too, uh, have a good time with it. <laughs> there have been a few new folks that have joined us during this time of virtual worship, but it's time it's a little bit hard to know who's really new for the first Amen. time. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, on my first Sunday at Shalom as as a pastor here. Um, one of the first things that happened uh, after I walked in the door was that John Otto, for those of you who know him, walked right up to me, stuck out his hand and said, hi, you must be new here, who are you? <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and it was the most wonderful welcome I could have received. Uh, there, I, I told him who I was, he acted embarrassed, but we um, bonded instantly, so. Yeah, just just say hello. It is it is never awkward to say hello, except when it is. <laughs> so just a few announcements uh, in your bulletin to make you aware of. The church office will be closed the next couple of days um, uh, as we take our Easter holiday, etc. Um, and so uh, just be aware of that. Uh, the um, Vacation Bible School is coming up the week after Memorial Day, so if that is relevant to you, uh, either as a volunteer or as a parent or as a child, um, uh, check out that announcement in your bulletin as well. And uh, uh, I would like to invite anyone who is interested into a membership class at Shalom. Uh, once or twice a year. Uh, I run a series of conversations where people interested in joining in membership uh, get together, um, share with one another, learn about the congregation, learn about Anabaptism, uh, and, and uh, then join 
in the congregational membership. If that is something that you're interested in, please get in touch with me. Um, we, we have a handful already, and, and I hope to have a few more. And finally, uh, this was an idea from the worship committee uh, that we're going to try in the month of May, uh, the announcement called, Show Us Your Pandemic Projects. We know through talking with people that there are all sorts of interesting things that you all have been up to over the past couple years. New hobbies that you've taken up, or projects that you've done, or just things that you have accomplished or given yourself to in a variety of ways. And we thought it would be fun, and I hope you do too, to share some of that with one another. So during the month of May, we'll have tables set up in the gathering space. So bring your thing that you built, or a picture of the chickens that you got, or whatever it is uh, that, that, y that you have taken an interest in recently, something that you do outside of work just for the joy of it, and, uh, and, we'll share with one another what we've been up to. So with all of those things, and the many more that are on our hearts, let's come before God in prayer, and we'll close by reading together the, the prayer that will be on your screen. God of light, God of life, God of shalom, God of resurrection, we give you thanks that we can come before you today in worship. We remember all those whose worship is interrupted, is difficult, is dangerous. We pray for our congregation, for the many people here, the visitors who are joining us, and those who are traveling today. We pray for our conference, Western District Conference, as it prepares for its annual assembly. We pray for Mennonite Church USA as it prepares for an assembly as well. We pray for the church around the world, celebrating your resurrection this morning. May we be witnesses to the new life and new creation that you offer today and all days. We pray for our community, those in need. For all of us who can share your gifts with the world. This morning we pray for the sick, we pray for the dying, we pray for those who mourn and those who care for loved ones. When faced with death, give us hope for new life. And send us your spirit, God, spirit of hope, spirit of life, spirit of creation. As we pray together in one voice with the words on our screen. Hopefully. Nurturing God, root us in your love and grow us up to bear the fruit of your spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. I invite the choir to come forward uh, and sing our closing song. Uh, Evan has a couple of instructions for us. Our final hymn today is going to be partially on your screen. 
There are five verses. We are going to sing together as a congregation the first and fifth verse in unison. Crown him with many crowns. I'd also like to thank this group for coming this morning and having a short rehearsal together and putting something together that's a little bit different than what we normally do. So it's great to have you guys up here and thank you for doing this. As we go from this place with hallelujahs in the air, 
May we be drawn from our closeness to God's openness, giving thanks to Jesus who went before us, showing us the resurrection and showing us the way. Hallelujah. Amen.